Hi, I'm Dan Helmick, and I'm presenting on optimal performance parameters that are found in the NVMe spec, mainly focused on SSDs, even though they could be applied to HDDs. Covering some example drive, it's important for this. Uh, I'm talking about kind of bringing this into a real drive. And so I give an example drive that I speak through, some terminology. And then I go through the right parameters, deallocate, and end with the read. And um, for me, the reason I made this presentation is that I found that there's a difference in what's written in the spec and then how you bring that into a real SSD. And uh, for that, that's, that's really where I focused, is bringing that, that spec wording and saying, OK, when this hits a real physics of a drive or NAND, how do we actually apply these parameters that are a little bit abstract in the, the spec? Uh, of course, it's separated from uh, implementation, as a spec should be. But we actually need to have some common alignment within the industry. So that way, there's a host and a drive vendor commonality on how they mesh, right? So just making sure that there's a, a comprehension on how that comes back into the drive implementation and where these decisions happen. So this is my example SSD here. And I'll refer back to this. And it's very much a toy example. Uh, I even chose three die instead of powers of two. Nobody does that. That's, we only have powers of two. So, um, but here on this page, I also use this to give my uh, acronyms, right? So if you uh, are reviewing this and then coming back to this page, uh, I use a terminology, for example. So I have 12 NAND die total, two planes per die. EBs is erase blocks, right? So my image here has erase blocks, EBs. Word lines, WL, TLC NAND, um, upper page, middle page, lower page, right? So these are pretty common uh, acronyms, but I wanted to make sure that they're here, that people can go back to them, right? Um, the two things that I want to call attention to before I move on is that we have a super block is a logical abstraction that I use here. I've also heard them call a garbage collection unit. And basically, I, I draw a little dashed line around here, and I'm just basically grouping these four die together, pulling out two erase block pairs from each die. And then this would be a set of uh, eight different erase blocks that now are going to be used as one unit. So it's a, a logical abstraction. And then the other is a mapping unit. This is also something that people might use as a indirection size and the DRAM for their logical to physical pointers. Um, so we have, uh, before I move on, want to make sure to go through the images here. We have the host, controller, four NAND channels, three die for each channel. Our NAND die, I have that shown here, plane zero and one, many erase blocks, 1024. Each erase block is written with word lines. And the word lines are broken down upper, middle, and lower page. Also relevant here, I have three example fill sequences. These example fill sequences are just that. They are examples. And I partly use them because they're easy, not because they're necessarily the most common or anything like that. Uh, there are other fill sequences. These are the ones I'm talking about. The full word line fill, you'll see there I have a sequential fill. So if we hypothetically were to erase everything and we start off writing at LBA0, then you could call the numbering of the upper page, you could say 0, 1, 2, 3, and they would line up with a 4K sector size uh, uh, 4K. And you could say LBA0, 1, 2, 3. But the reality is, as a NANS, uh, is programs were actually filling in the same sequence, even if you wrote randomly, right? So you could have random LBAs, and it's not necessarily LBA correlated. So we are going to fill in the the word line, the full word line fill is going to fill first one plane, uh, one word line. You fill the upper page, then the middle page, and then finally the lower page. And then this is an optional uh, choice here. And at that point, because all three pages have been programmed on plane zero. You could program on that particular word line zero here in this uh, example. 
And then you can start transmitting the data to plane one and you can send the 12 through 23, right? And so this is the full word line fill and I have the blue lines showing which pages and sequences, right? So hopefully when we move on to the die stripe, you can see that we're filling plane zero and plane one pages. Similarly, we fill all three pages so we can program both planes together at the same time. And I also have a super block stripe fill shown uh, just so that I have a third example more so than, than anything else. But here we're actually filling all the way across uh, the upper page first in all three, uh, or sorry, all uh, four dies, all planes, and then we fill across. So hypothetically, this fill sequence would allow programming of all the NAND pages in par parallel across all the channels. So getting into, now that we've moved through some assumptions on the, the drive architecture that I wanted to focus on and some example fill sequences, I wanted to speak through the right granularity and right alignment. With these, I have here images from the spec grabbed, right? And so I'm, I'm adding some notations. The only thing I'm adding is the numbering there for the logical block I put in red. Uh, otherwise, this image is unchanged. And so I wanted to make sure that when we look at the spec, how do we understand that coming back to the actual um, NAND parameters and how, how is that impacting us? And so for example, if we had a 512 byte sector and we were filling, so I have logical block number 128 through 135 being written, uh, but here the host did a write of only 130, 131, and 132. With this, they're, they're gonna be doing a write that's gonna end up coming in and it's going to need to uh, modify a four kilobyte size sector on the NAND. So this image that you can see uh, from, from the spec, I actually wrote that, let me see if I can get the mouse here. So the NPWA is three, NPWG, of seven, this is extracted out of this image, right? So the three is a zero base value bringing us to halfway, and the seven is, is meaning eight in a zero space counting. So we can see with a word line example that I have shown from our, our example drive, we have a 16 kilobyte page size. And so if we were to have NPWA of three, NPWG of seven, we're actually not gonna be aligning onto our word line very well. And so while this is an image from the spec, I think that we can talk about aligning to a 4K size or a 16K, 16K size uh, just due to NAND constraints. And so for, for my own uh, uh, proposal is that it's much better and more common to talk about NANDs uh, being aligned where NPWA and NPWG are generally gonna be thought of as equal. And that's, that's mostly because we're gonna have mapping units staying at 4K in size and we're gonna keep doing that, right? So having them equal is making sense. And I think that while the spec enables both of them to be different, I think that we would be having to talk about some program in place memories or something like that in order to move to a separate and different NPWA, NPWG. So generally, just before moving on from this slide, the, the conclusion that I walk away from looking at NAND parameters is that we have an SSD with a mapping unit of 4K and we, we kind of want to keep those equal. And moving on from that, I think that we can then talk about the other IO examples and what they are going to mean to the NAND as they receive writes. So these images are actually break breakouts similar from what we just saw. So a conformant IO first, we, we again go back to um, the granularity and alignment being equal, set to eight for a 512 byte uh, sector. And now when we receive a write of four kilobytes in size for a 512 byte sector, we're actually gonna have an alignment on the NPWG. And we can come down and see that alignment down here and we would line up to these, these boxes that are outlined in our word lines here. If we were to have a non-conformant IO at the host side, 
and we were offset. Uh, we can see that there's a head runt and a tail runt that might happen, right? So NPWG is still 4K in size, but now we're offset by 512, two 512 uh, byte sectors. We're gonna recognize that we have to read from two different 4K units. We need to modify the data that's being written, and then those two units are going to need to be programmed back onto our NAND. So this is causing a read, modify, write of two different sectors, even though we're 4K aligned. Similarly, um, you could look at a very small write, and you could see that that write might fit perhaps within the entire uh, 4K unit. So there's a modification of three, so a write of three. So a single read is going to be able to pick up the head and tail runt data. We're going to be able to program that as a 4K unit. But this is really where, when I read the spec, and I'm looking at these values, and I'm, I'm pulling them back as to what that means for the NAND, is, is whether it's going to cause a read, modify, write based on our 4K uh, mapping unit size there. When I am looking at applying NPWG and NPWA, I think that keeping them aligned makes a lot of sense. Um, also setting NPWG equal to the mapping unit is a, is a strong recommendation. And the reason is to avoid using these here, we can avoid that read, modify, write. There are other values that can be used, and I will get to this a little bit more with deallocate. There's controller decisions and constraints where maybe uh, the controller decisions might, might drive a different conclusion on where you want to set these parameters. But for NPWG and NPWA, it's more driven by our NAND characteristics and the mapping unit choice. Avoiding the most harmful write penalties ends up being the, a great advantage to aligning to the NPWG and NPWA values. However, when we look at the most optimal performance that we would expect for, uh, for writes, we can move on and use um, namespace optimal write size NOWS, and now we're looking at the context of our fill sequence making a difference here. So we want to move up from, are we just getting a read, modify, write penalty? And we want to move towards, what is the next level of optimization that's available for improved write performance? With these three example fill sequences, we can go through and we can see that if we had a namespace optimal write size of 16K, then those would be able to fill up and write one page on one plane, right? So a reasonable selection for NOWS uh, is, is to focus on just that page fill. But similarly, when you do the die stripe fill, you could say 32K is reasonable because I want to get one page on each plane. And you could also go very extreme with uh, the super block stripe fill of 128. Alternatively, <clears throat> I think that it's useful to speak about a full word line fill. Another uh, place that you could uh, recommend NOWS would be 48 kilobytes because now we'll have uh, 0 through 11 on plane 0. Those, those mapping units would be filled all at once. So there are choices where you're trying to get a, either a full word line program, a full uh, page fill, or alternatively, the other thing that is not discussed here is those controller choices where perhaps in the controller you have 16 kilobyte uh, sized buffers that you allocate and move through the controller. And I purposely didn't focus on the controller um, input. Uh, impacts as that's a little bit too vendor specific and it's going to be different from vendor to vendor. So overall, uh, we do want to focus on the NAND characteriz characterizations um, for optimizations, but there are discussions for controllers uh, to better optimize for different values. And while NOWS being set to 4K is a valid setting, we lost an opportunity to provide a second level of optimization available to the, co uh, to the host. If we already set uh, NPWA, NPWG to 
uh, 4K, they don't get any additional information, right? So there's a strong value in saying, let's choose a second uh, influencer to help further improve write performance, right? And of course, once you have a setting of NOWS, generally speaking, I think that um, pretty commonly, if you had a multiple of NOWS, you would expect, again, equal or better performance. So it's always good if a host is looking at this information and looking at this presentation, and they, they see NOWS is set to 16K, well, 32K would be equally happy, maybe a little bit better, right? So a host can feel comfort in moving to a multiple that's much higher. So I just spoke through a lot of right optimal uh, uh, performance settings there. But I also think that it's useful to speak about what one might find when they look at a general SSD. And so I purposely avoided uh, any specific SSD and drew what is often showing up amongst the, the landscape of vendors. Shown here is the same drive, and as you can see on the x-axis, we have a command size increasing. So if we had a 4K mapping unit size and we have writes of 512 bytes or one kilobyte, then you would expect that read, modify, write penalty to be happening in those lower, smaller uh, mapping uh, IOs. We would expect uh, a definite read, modify, write uh, slowdown. Once we reach 4K and we're writing 4K units or larger, then at that point, we basically would expect the, from an IOP perspective, we would see a decline. And from a bandwidth perspective, it would actually be equal. And the reason for that is because the, the command size decreasing with the, uh, with the bandwidth staying the same, right? So at this point, I just verbally was saying two slides ago, set NPWG and A to 4K, and then NOWS ends up being a, uh, a secondary optimization. So this is where I think there's high value in calling out and, and ad calling attention to that, that over the landscape, if you're looking at this, then the value of hitting NOWS may not be as high as making sure that you're never violating the NPWG, NPWA, right? So, this is something where, for each vendor, there should be a discussion. I would encourage that to make sure that, um, that if there is a target NOWS the host wants to see, communicate that to the vendor. They can probably look at internal optimizations, but there is a possibility where they, they've been driven to be interface limited, that, that the drive is over-provisioned. from a optimal deallocate per, uh, perspective. Just put up the same SSD, just a reminder here. Um, using NPDG, NPDA, we would love to see a write amplification of one. I think that there's numerous features in NVMe for trying to get to a write amplification of one. And I think that the deallocate parameters can be a way to reach write amplification of one as well. It's not necessarily as direct, but if these were followed or set correctly, I think that they can be a great tool for a host to, to increase the performance, even of a conventional SSD. In order to do that right amplification factor of one, then you really kind of need to request of the vendors where the entire deallocate would be a full superblock size. And so now the NPDGL, NPDG a N P D A L. Those two are just basically enabling these large erase sizes, and I think that this is allowing something like what we see in ZNS, where there might be perhaps gigabyte-sized uh, zones. Similarly, you could look at a conventional drive, and you could sequentially write, and you could sequentially deallocate on these same boundaries, and you could you could get a uh, poor man's emulation of ZNS drive just if you were to restrict your traffic. But it does require restricting your traffic as a host. So there's definitely, it's, it doesn't have those strong boundaries there. I think that as hosts grow in the quantity of data uh, that they're managing and that they're ma managing over larger drives, and also as uh, drive vendors are increasing their 
erase block sizes and the, the number of die per drive, I think that the, the, the L fields are going to be more and more ne needed. Um, but I think they are harder to reach, right? So now, again, um, coming back for those hosts that aren't able to fit gigabyte size deallocates and sequentially write for gigabytes at a time, how do they use this? And so I think that when you circle around and you come back to uh, what is a useful target, I think that um, this ends up being a little bit more of a controller level discussion, but each vendor within their controller are going to be managing uh, deallocates and there'll be, it'll be more reasonable for a host to hit hundreds of megabytes in deallocates is what I've, uh, what I've understood uh, for many hosts. So aggregating up and having that conversation with a drive vendor on controller limits ends up being a good conversation to have. A way to think about NPDG, NPDA is that we can reframe them and draw the similarities and analogies to SGS and ZNS. I think that I was doing this verbally, but for circular logs that are, if one drive is used for circular logs, you could look at and see similarities with this, uh, SGS. Um, there could be a SSD cache management because they are often, the caches are written sequentially and deallocated together as the caches are uh, uh, refreshed and reused. And you could do something like a log structured file system, but that is maybe an analogy that's more towards ZNS where You've looked at written, writing those sequentially, deallocating those uh, 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 large structures. So RocksDB has been in many presentations for ZNS. So why would a, a host want to differ in super block size? I think that it can be a challenge for some hosts, especially some legacy hosts to aggregate up uh, the larger gigabyte sized uh, uh, deallocates. And so I, um, this is just a reiteration that there are internal controller decisions along with the NAND features. And those are gonna end up being more vendor proprietary that I'm not able to get into across the, the general uh, landscape. For reading, namespace preferred read granularity and read alignment. With reading access to NAND, the, uh, the ability to read to various locations on the NAND at various sizes is much greater. There is not as many restrictions and we can read pretty much anywhere on the NAND when we want. So for these settings, I think that they're uh, as a host, if I were trying to optimize and spend time on which, which parameter to target and optimize, I think that following the writes are probably a better, uh, better decision than the reads if you have a limited amount of time to spend on optimizations. The reads were able to come in without any read modify write penalty. There's no penalty. So now we're coming around to the, the reason for setting an NPRG. Generally, you could set that down to your uh, sector size. A reason you might possibly set a, a value different from your sector size could be if you had ECC capabilities op optimized for common accesses, or if there were controller metadata um, or CRC PI type layouts. Um, so there are reasons, but those are going to be specific to a vendor and specific probably even to a product generation. I'm not sure that these decisions are going to set uh, be set in stone even within one particular vendor. Namespace optimal read size is similar uh, in context. There's a high desire to provide NORS different from NPRG, uh, NPRA, because we want to provide a secondary optimization target for the host to go for. So we want to choose a value that's larger. And so I'm looking at perhaps the word line is the example I'm showing here. The awareness for NORS is that it, a 16 kilobyte read is going to depend on being able to get a full page read. 
And so while it's true to get a full page read, it's going to be faster. We're going to be able to access all of the 16 kilobytes with one NAND command to do that read. Um, this is exposed to being messed up if there were one errant write uh, from any of the host threads, any of the applications. So if we had one write that sets us off, then we're now suddenly going to be misaligned. We're going to have to do two page reads, and they even may be slower, right? So here I have shown that we move over to the other page. So now it's actually one uh, read of the NANDs waiting for the others to read, right? So we can't parallel. We're not able to, as a drive, read from two different places and get the read back happening uh, from two different uh, times, right? So there's an awareness that if you're going to depend on NORS, you would need to control any of those writes and have some confidence uh, if, you were, if you were strongly targeting a, a read improvement for this. So this is, uh, in conclusion, these are kind of one summarized uh, slide where I just speak through pretty much what I've already presented here, just kind of captured it all together. Um, and what I've concluded is setting the, uh, the NPWG and A into uh, the mapping unit size, avoids those read, modify writes, and NOWS is a secondary optimization that's available. Um, going towards the deallocate settings towards superblocked groupings is a great thing to do from a drive uh, perspective, but I think that there's a conversation with drive vendors and with the customers in order to set what is the largest that a host can tolerate that's reasonable for them to aggregate for deallocates. NPRG, NPRA, uh, generally speaking, are going to be logical block size. And NORS should be something more towards uh, either a page read or perhaps a controller optimized value. And, and I end up saying, OK, if I've recommended this from a drive perspective, what would that mean from a host perspective? And so I, I took that same information and I basically said, here's uh, an order of importance from my own opinion where optimizing for writes and really driving hard for that NPWG is a high value, and then moving down to the deallocates is where I would emphasize my host programming time and examining restructuring of file system or other drive interactions. So with that, I am able to take any questions if anyone has any. Um, but I think that's... So, so logical blocks that are not a power of two size. So um, this, an example would be instead of 512 or 4K, so a logical block size of, of uh, I don't know, 100, 4104. So generally, I, so 4104 would be with the CRC and, and metadata. So generally, I have simplified things here and I focused on, uh, so we have upper page, middle page, and lower page here. And I'm showing that there's four mapping units per page. And I've simplified things to just say that four kilobytes is a mapping unit, right? So if we were to change that, then generally, and I think this is common throughout the industry, there is some, some excess NAND space, which is consumed with either ECC or other uh, interior controller needs. And so generally, I think that these rules all follow because all of the vendors have already, it's not really a 16K physical NANDs page. We've already got that excess space to overflow. And I think that there are limits, right? So there was a decision at one point to put in enough room for so much ECC and so much CRC or other extended metadata. And so definitely there's a time when you can overflow that. But I think that most common uh, customer use cases, these rules will all still apply. And I think that it would be unusual LBA sizes when they, when they start to overflow the NAND. So um, I think that, yeah, then it would, 
you get into, if you overflowed the NAND size, then at that time you have a whole lot more controller impacts that would be coming in and they're gonna be vendor specific and I can't give guidelines for an industry on that. Thank you. Yeah, thanks.